Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and macOS 13.1 RC Ventura was released to developers and public beta testers. This particular version being that it's RC, which means release candidate, means it's the final version released to developers and beta testers before it's released to the public. It will be the same version unless there's something actually found that's wrong with it. Then they'll update it again. And this particular update is 1.68 gigabytes. That's on a MacBook Pro 16 inch. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the build number in just a moment. Let's close this out here. And if you're wondering if you're a beta tester, if you should uninstall the beta profile, I would probably wait until it's released to the public. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number. So we'll go to the Apple, then about this Mac. And as you can see here, we have Ventura 13.1. If we click on this, you can see the build number is 22C65. So that's the current build. That's how you know you're on the RC version. Hopefully that will be the same version for the public build as well. Now, as far as what's new, let's go ahead and talk about that because the first thing has to do with a new app that they've added. They promised this for some time. You can see it here. It's called Freeform. If we go ahead and click Freeform, it says, welcome to Freeform. I've opened it on other devices, but just not the Mac. So we'll go ahead and click continue and you'll see it says add to your board. We can see our boards from our different devices here. So we'll open this one here and let's go ahead and take a look at our iPhone and we should be able to collaborate in real time with someone else with this. So as I update the iPhone, you should see it here as well. So let's go ahead and try that. So you can see here's the free form app. So we'll just go ahead and maybe we'll draw here, we'll just draw a couple scribbles. You can see it in real time on my phone and on the Mac at the same time. If I want to tap done, then maybe add a little text box. We'll move that around. You can see me move it around in real time. If I double tap to enter text, we can just add Zolotech and you'll see it again shows up in real time and we can see it on both devices. If I want to maybe add something else in red, we'll just put a circle here. You'll see it's immediate right now. So they've really updated this in some of the earlier betas. It was slow. Now it's basically in real time. So if you're collaborating with multiple people, marking this up, adding photos, adding text, you can do that with someone else hundred percent in real time and see what everyone's working on. So this is a great addition and I'm curious how many of you will use it. Let me know in the comments below. With this update, we get a significant increase in security options. So if we go ahead to system settings, click on our name under our name, click on iCloud under iCloud, scroll to the bottom and you'll see something new called advanced data protection. So of course we have free form that's new, so we can sync that in the cloud, but now we have advanced data protection. So if we click on this, you'll see it says advanced data protection. We can turn this on and they make you turn this on because you're responsible for the encryption keys. If you lose them, you won't be able to recover your data. So you can see here, it says iCloud encrypts your data to keep it secure. Advanced data protection uses end to end encryption to ensure that the iCloud data types listed here can only be decrypted by your trusted devices, protecting your information, even in the case of a data breach in the cloud. It says because Apple will not have the keys required to recover your data, you will be guided through verification of your recovery methods in case you ever lose access to your account. And you'll see it shows that it's going to end to end encrypt device backup, messages, backup, iCloud drive notes, photos, reminders, Safari bookmarks, Siri shortcuts, voice memos, and wallet passes. You can set up account recovery or turn on advanced data protection. If we click on turn on, it takes a moment and then it's going to guide you through setting it up. So set up account recovery. And then you can add someone you want to allow to recover this. So you have a recovery key. You can print this out. Once this is enabled, you'll have the keys to this alone. So no one else will. So this is something great that's come across not only to Mac OS, but also iOS and iPad OS. So we'll have full encryption. If you want to enable that, I'll be enabling that very, very soon. And also something they've promised for the future in 2023 is additional upgrades to overall security. And at the top, if we just go into Apple newsroom, we'll search for that. Go to Apple newsroom, scroll down. You'll see Apple advances user security with powerful new data protections. If we click on this, we can see what's coming in the future with iMessage contact key verification, security keys for Apple ID and advanced data protection for iCloud providers. 
And if we scroll down, you'll see more information about it. I'll link this in the description if you want to read it, but it will even verify if someone looks to be on a device that's not theirs. So that's something it says an unrecognized device may have been added to Jenny's account. That's something it will let you know as well as being able to use security keys, a UB key with your device and more. So that's great that they're bringing that to this device. That's something we haven't seen from Apple that will be coming in 2023. There's been a pretty nice update with messages. So if we go into messages, you'll see if we go into a search and then we type in cars, they've actually updated the overall search within messages, which will now allow you to find photos based on their content, such as a car, a person, text, or even a dog. So if you're searching for something like that, it will find it within all of your messages. It's been upgraded. It was a bit of a surprise. Also something Apple's done that they've actually abandoned, which I think most people will be happy with is CSAM photo detection. So within photos, Apple talked about this a year ago, if we go to Safari and you'll see Mac rumors posted about this and it looks like Apple's abandoning CSAM. So this was the ability for it to scan iCloud photos for different material that may not be good for people to see or be abusive. And that's no longer going to be in any iOS, Mac OS or iPad OS update version. So that's gone. It's no longer there and they've abandoned plans for it and instead decided to implement the security updates I mentioned before. They've updated notes so that within a note, if maybe you're collaborating with someone, you're sharing a note and they're updating it in real time, you'll actually see a cursor and who is updating it. So if you have multiple people, maybe working on a document, editing it together, you'll now see that information here in real time as to who's editing it based on the cursor and what they're doing. Additionally, find my gets an update as well. Find my now has the ability to help you pinpoint devices such as air tags, AirPods pro second generations case and find my network accessories. And so that's something they've updated where you can use that to maybe locate those newer devices. So if we go to AirPods pro two, you'll see it thinks it's in multiple locations, although it's not, but it says the right bud is out of the case. Then we can actually update this and then go to the eye and locate it. So we have the option to actually update this, play a sound, get directions to it and notifications when found. So it's great that they've added that. It's just an update for the newer devices. They've also fixed a few things and one of those has to do with notes. So where we had those cursors before now notes will actually sync with iCloud after updates are made. I know quite a few people had that bug that should be resolved now. Also, it fixes an issue where you could lose your keyboard and mouse input in some apps and games. I know I've seen that here and there. I didn't realize it was a problem. I thought it was just Bluetooth, but it seems to be specific to the OS and it should be resolved. Additionally, there's Apple security updates. And if we go into Safari, go to Apple security updates, they haven't updated it yet. They typically update this the day the update is released to the public. And so right now it hasn't been updated even for iOS 16.1.2 or tvOS 16.1.1. So all of those things have yet to be updated. And of course we did have releases yesterday of iOS 16.2 RC, iPad OS 16.2 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 16.2 RC, and also iOS 15.7.2 RC and iPad OS 15.7.2 RC. All of those are expected to release along with this update. And we can expect the release of this probably early next week. So if we go to the calendar, You'll see early next week, I would expect it probably on Monday or Tuesday, the 12th or 13th of December. Then maybe we'll have another beta later in the week. And that's typically when we have the last beta until the new year. So that's normally what we have. And as far as if you should install this update when it's out, or if you want to install it now, this should be the final version released to the public. I've used it with Final Cut Pro. It seems to work fine and I haven't had any issues. In fact, I've had less issues with 13.1 RC than I have with 13. So it seems to be a little bit better that way for me with any updates there. Now, for those of you that are curious, many have asked about battery life on my MacBook Pros. This is a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And if we go down to battery, I don't really look at it. I actually leave it plugged in most of the time. So battery health says normal. This is what I would like to see come to iOS. Just say normal and then go into it if you want. I'm at 99%. It's about a year old or so at this point. I have it on optimized battery charging and I just leave it plugged into a studio display or into power when I'm not using it. Then I'll take it on the go. But it seems to be holding up well and I'm not really having any issues with it. So I think that's great. Performance wise is great. And like I said, I'm having less bugs than I did with the previous update. So that's great. 
If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description for the iOS version. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.